Hey guys, Chrono16 here. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to go outside and spot Comet Ison while it's still in the morning skies. And also, once it gets into the uh, late afternoon or early evening skies, how you can see Comet Ison as it heads inbound towards our sun. Now, what we have on screen here is, again, the program called Stellarium. There's a link under this video on how to get this program for free. Just simply download it for free. Okay? Very simple program to use. Now, we have it set. Now, this is the date that I'm recording this video, by the way. We have it set to the current time, which is 4.25 a.m. in the early morning. Okay? And, and I mean, I can go back an hour, but it'll obviously put ice in a little bit lower in the sky so let's go ahead and go to about 5 let's go ahead and go to about 5 a.m. and that'll be 6 a.m. Eastern Time uh, 5 a.m. Central and 4 a.m. Mountain and uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time and what I have turned on here is I have the constellations and everything turned on now let's say you just downloaded this program and you don't know how to use it okay uh, what you want to do is is you want to go over here to the menu area and you want to click on the configuration window okay once you click on the configuration window right here that little symbol right there you click on programs now once you first download this if I'm not mistaken I, can, uh, I could be mistaken about this is not programmed into this program so what you want to do is you want to go over to this little configuration that's lit up there and usually when you get here it looks like this okay you, what you want to do is you want to go over and go to plugins and click on solar system editor okay just like that and then you click on configure down here once you click on conf configure what you want to do guys is you want to uh, import some objects so how do you do that you go down here and click on import orbital elements in MPC format you click that guys okay and it'll take you to this screen right here now once you go to this screen I've already had ISIN selected here um, but we're gonna assume that ISIN is not in here what you normally do is you click in uh, C-2012 S1 ISIN it'll find it once you find it on the list you click click it right there and highlight it with the check right there and what you want to do is, is you want to add object now if you've already gotten ISIN added this is how you update the information for ISIN you simply click on it again and add object and it updates it to the most current position that they have on it now um, everything that they calculate in the in the skies guys always has to be corrected because of human error so if it updates ISIN's position is only because of human error has been involved and nothing more nothing suspicious or strange about, about that at all that happens all the time once you do all that guys you get out of your screen and there's your current position of ISIN now let's say you're trying to look at ISIN with a telescope and you want to and you have a handheld computer that's connected to your telescope which most of them usually come with nowadays uh, you simply type in the coordinates of ISIN and uh, there are several ways to do this guys one way you can do it is what I'm fixing to do here now is I'm fixing to take you to this website I've taken you here before in other previous videos the skylive.com okay once you calibrate your telescope once you calibrate it guys you go here this is the position of ISIN you type these numbers in and uh, hit enter on your handheld telescope uh, computer there and it'll take you to the exact location of ISIN wherever it may be in the sky once you do that okay alright it's that simple that is if you have a go-to telescope with a connected handheld computer to it now as of right now as me as of me recording this video ISIN is not visible with a pair of, of binoculars you can you can see it with a, a good telescope right now uh, ISIN is not as bright as they forecasted it to be unfortunately but again that's the way it is now as we go further into November 
as we go further into November there we go I hate when this happens sometimes this program there we go it gets a little stuck there we go further into November icing gets lower and lower to the horizon so by the time you get around to the 15th guys you will not be able to see icing uh, in the morning time skies anymore because again icing is coming toward the sun so it's going to get lower on the horizon as you look east in the morning times and, and after the 15th you really won't be able to see icing anymore in the morning skies at all so what we've done now guys we've jumped ahead to uh, again the 16th and we're going to go ahead a little bit further here of uh, the 16th of November and we go on into the 17th of November and the 18th of November and the 19th as you can see on screen right there there's icing heading straight toward the sun now obviously you will not be able to see icing during the daytime at all because it's the daytime so as icing continues to close in on the sun we got to set to a little bit after 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Adjust your time accordingly. And then right around, uh, well, actually on the 28th of um, November, Ison, as you can see, goes around the sun. Now, if it makes it and comes back out, then it's going to be pretty bright. Uh, now, if you're going to try to look at Ison uh, with a telescope, guys, make sure you got the proper solar filter. If you don't, you're going to blind yourself. Plain and simple, you're going to burn your eyes out. Okay, that's nothing to play with at all. So make sure you got the proper um, solar filter to look at Ison. Uh, now, will you be able to see anything as it comes up back from around the sun or head towards the sun? Um, it's really not something that you can actually call there's no telling what you're gonna see so I can't say you're gonna see anything and I really can't say you're not gonna see anything because ice and holes together it's gonna be pretty bright too so just make sure you have the proper filters as you uh, look at this thing as it heads around the Sun now as we go on to the 29th in the following days a little after 5 uh, PM Central Time, Ison is just hugging the um, the ground there basically, and uh, as we go farther into December, it hugs it for a little while. And as we get around the ninth, it starts heading out west and toward the northeast. There, um, you can see Ison gets a little higher in the sky, and obviously the higher it's getting, the dimmer it's getting. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to we're going to want to go a little bit farther into the evening there so we can get a better look at Ison. so we're going to right around oh six uh, let's say 6 p.m. central time there and as the days go by as we go up to the 21st and head towards Christmas Ison gets higher on Christmas Eve it's higher it's about a magnitude 4 you should definitely easily be able to go outside guys and look toward the northwest toward the northwest okay see it right there and see Ison with a pair of binoculars naked eye should be able to see with your naked eyes for sure uh, definitely with a pair of binoculars as you look toward the northwest as Ison will be very vis visible if it holds together in the northwestern sky and as time goes on guys Ison gets higher in the sky and it gets dimmer as we head on into January it gets higher in the sky it gets dimmer um, we're gonna go up to about 7 p.m. now and uh, as we head out toward the next marker date as I call it which is the 14th to 15th of January Ison will still be visible definitely with a pair of binoculars as it heads up north obviously up in the north it starts heading higher in the sky up toward Capella uh, at this time around the 15th of January guys we should be heading in to the debris tail of Ison uh, as it was coming into the solar system earlier we're passing that point where it was coming in at who knows what's going to happen guys I've always stated that I thought Ison was a harbinger of things to come I will stick to that I do firmly believe Ison is a harbinger of uh, the horrible calamities that are coming to this planet very soon 
Anyway, guys, that's your guide on to how to spot Comet Ison, where to look at. Very simple, guys. Just following the simple instructions I gave in this video, and you should definitely be able to see Comet Ison with no problems, assuming Ison holds together and gets bright like they said it would. Anyway, guys, clear skies. Thanks for watching. God bless. late afternoon or early evening skies how you can see Comet Ison as it heads inbound towards our Sun now what we have on screen here is again the program called Stellarium there's a link under this video on how to get this program for free just simply download it for free okay very simple program to use now we have it set now this is the date that I'm recording this video by the way we have it set to the current time which is 4:25 a.m. in the early morning okay and in I mean I can go back an hour but it'll obviously put ice in a little bit lower in the sky so let's go ahead and go to about 5 let's go ahead and go to about 5 a.m. and that'll be 6 a.m. Eastern Time uh, 5 a.m. Central and 4 a.m. Mountain and uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time. And what I have turned on here is I have the constellations and everything turned on. Now, let's say you just downloaded this program and you don't know how to use it. Okay? Uh, what you want to do is, is you want to go over here to the menu area and you want to click on the configuration window okay once you click on the configuration window right here that little symbol right there you click on programs now once you first download this if I'm not mistaken Ison, uh, I could be mistaken about this is not programmed into this program so what you want to do is you want to go over to this little configuration Hey guys, Chrono16 here. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to go outside and spot Comet Ison while it's still in the morning skies. And also, once it gets into the 